No, it it it's it just does not work. <laughs> oh my god, we because have I, to get back on track, Galen. This is this is bad. <laughs> Mario Kart oh, tour delayed yes. summer 2019. No one okay. cares. Stop, <laughs> don't 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 listen to that game anymore. <laughs> Mario Kart Tour. We know very little, but it's coming out later this year. It got caught at a stop sign. What up, kids and squids? Welcome to the Nintendo Everything Podcast, episode 14. I am your host, Oni Dino. With me, I have a crafted Yoshi made out of soggy cardboard. It's Galen. <laughs> well, that was that was actually a pretty decent uh, Yoshi sound. The the thank you, song. thank you, thank you very much. I I liked it rather than a blah. I think of it more as a blam. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm a uh, blue Yoshi then. In, in that case, I'm the, one of the other ones. You accidentally blued yourself as a Yoshi. <laughs> That's a joke for only a specific subsect of a crowd. Mm-hmm. So, hey, wow, another big news week. I said that a bit like Christopher Walken, but whatever. A uh, big, big news week. <laughs> hey, wow. Oh, wow. No, don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Another news week. A- another bad Christopher Walken impersonation that you've never heard before. Mm-hmm. Might cut that out. <laughs> so it sounds like plans are in place for year 2020 for the Nintendo domination. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we'll explain as we go through the podcast, and by the end of it, dear listener, you'll have a great grasp on the current state of Nintendo and their near future plans. This week, we're talking all the big news that just came out, game updates, sales results, and forecasts, future plans for Nintendo branding outside of gaming, including a new Nintendo store, a Mario movie, and Universal Studios Super Nintendo World. And of course, a quick reminder that this is a weekly show. You can hear us anywhere podcasts can be heard. Each week's episode goes live on Sundays in the States. iTunes and Spotify listeners get it bright and early on Sunday morning. And our website and YouTube, it comes out midday-ish. And YouTube listeners in particular, check out that description for timestamps. So just before we go into all the good news, Galen, uh, I want to do a bit of a spin on the adventure log segment that we usually have for what we've been playing this past week. And mm-hmm. let's just talk about my plant boy fatal cutie, Piranha Plant, getting added to Smash <laughs> Ultimate. <laughs> right? It's about time. Have you tried him out? I have, actually. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of time to play with him just yet, but yeah. managed to break into it and he's fun he's really fun to play as um he's a lot faster than i expected hmm yeah i could see how he would be weighty yeah i also really like his down and b attack because being able to just hide inside the pot and then the pot just ever so slightly tips over in one direction or another it's that it's so fun oh my god the pot tips over yeah wait so if you hold down in special and then, like, you mm-hmm. tilt over or something as pot tips over? Yeah. No, uh, if you just don't push a direction and just keep holding down in special, he'll just shoot straight up right. with his attack. But if you, while he's crouched down, turn, turn in a direction and just kind of ever so slightly just, like, flops over. And then he shoots out in that direction. Whoa, um, I did not know this. Clearly, I haven't gotten much time with him. It's also a lot of fun because if you are in midair and use it, He still goes inside the pot, and you can still rotate it around, so it's like you're turning it in midair, and then it just launches out, too. Can you you shoot downward from that move in midair? Like, entirely downward? Not all the way. Not that I've been able to see. Um, Okay, okay. I can get uh, maybe about a 75-degree angle down, so it's, like, definitely a lot different, but... I'll get out my Mushroom Kingdom protractor and figure it out. <laughs> Do all of that math. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's such a weird character. I'm really liking him though, but his specials is are what throw me off. They mm-hmm. super throw me off because like he's got a charge attack, but it's on the side special and his That throws me off. Right? His his charge poison special throws me off so much 
because I I usually play as Samus. Like, Samus yeah, has yeah. been one of my main for the entire time. So my charge attack is just push the button when I'm in a safe spot, not side smash and hold from there. Like, it throws me off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to learn how to play Piranha Plant a lot more because there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of really tricky mix-ups and weird stuff that you can definitely do with him. And mm -hmm. it's going to take some super getting used to, though, with those specials. <laughs> you know what would be a uh, great practice is just running him through all-star mode a little bit and kind of leveling that up a little bit there. Ooh, fantastic uh, segue there because I totally forgot. PSA to everybody listening, there are a few users apparently online claiming that if you use him in all-star mode that it might corrupt your save data. I don't know about the validity of this or whatnot, but just in case, PSA, probably wait till a patch for all-star mode for playing um, Piranha Plant. I want to just call him Plant Boy. Why do I just want to keep saying that only? <laughs> it's not his official name. That's just my nickname, my love name for him. So yeah, PSA. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure you can change the name of what character you're playing as to that, so you can make that happen. Yeah, yeah. Just wait for that amiibo and you can name it that. Oh my god, I can't wait for the amiibo. I'm so excited. Truth be told, I've already got mine pre-ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Of course I got mine pre-ordered. I feel like I saw a, uh, a quote from Nintendo specifically addressing the, hey, don't use him in an all-star mode right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wait for a patch. <laughs> So let's jump into all of this crazy news that just came out super recently. We had to completely change the outline for the show, and boy was it a pain in the butt. <laughs> so we've taken all of the huge amount of information that's come out from the financial results and the quarter three fiscal year results, and we've boiled them down and then categorized them so that way it is a very condensed and efficient. <laughs> we are bringing this info directly to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, in lieu of Nintendo Directs lately, please listen to our podcast here where we've put all this information together in a nice condensed format and we'll be presenting it directly to you. <laughs> I did the hand motion and I hope that you all do that hand motion with me too. <laughs> so before we jump into all of the financial news, we got a little bit of new game announcements and also a game delay. Now, what am I talking about for game announcements? Dr. Mario World is in development for mobile and iOS. Mm -hmm. This is a video game that Nintendo is making in partnership with Line to co-develop. And if you guys don't know what Line is, it is a social messaging app. It is huge in Japan. I'm pretty sure it's based in Japan. It's also used around the world though, so it's not just like a little niche thing. Personally, I'm expecting there to be like a large social component to this game. All we really know about it is that it is a, quote, action puzzle game featuring Dr. Mario. I mean, it's probably just Dr. Mario, right? But I wonder how they're going to adapt this to mobile. It's an early summer 2019 global release. And yeah, what do we think about this, Galen? Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. It was definitely a surprise. It was something I was yeah. not expecting. Also, I had personally never heard of Line before. Um, I had to actually look up who they were because I do not live in the Japan myself. So, yes. Well, they still use it in the States, though. Uh, just not as popular with all of the other different messaging systems. True. And there's a lot of different messaging systems to kind of go for. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, Line, mobile communication company established mm. in South Korea originally. Oh. They're now, they are now based in Japan. Yeah, they deal primarily with communication apps more than anything else, which is a bit of a surprise to me and lets me hypothesize what they are actually going to be doing for this new game. It's going to be a Dr. Mario game. Like, I'm I'm kind of surprised they went with Dr. Mario and not something like Tetris. I, well, on the other side of that coin, kind of understand why, because Dr. Mario does have that face to it. Well, Tetris is not a Nintendo property. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was huge because of Nintendo uh, putting it on the Game Boy back in the day. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, I remember playing Tetris on my Game Boy. I've lost way too many nights of sleep with my little reader light attached to the top of it. Mm. 
and heck, I just was playing Poyo Pop and or Cross Tetris or whatever the new game was on the mm-hmm. Switch. So I feel yeah. like that's an easy mistake. But circling <laughs> back, <laughs> circling back around, yeah, uh, new Doctor Mario game sounds fun. Um, something to have it on your phone with it being in conjunction with the Line Corporation. I'm wondering if we're going to see some Nintendo marketing integrated into messaging service. Like, I would love to see uh, Dr. Mario emojis, for example. I know that sounds really weird, but... No, no, no. I I think that that's kind of... I'd be surprised if that doesn't happen, because with Line, there are all of these stickers and emoji that you can buy, and they've been doing this for a really long time, so, I mean, kind of the West has been behind on this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Line has like official Line accounts. It's kind of like a mostly a messaging service, but it also has like a Facebook social component to it as well. Most people are just using it for messaging. They're not using it as a Facebook-esque thing. But yeah, I can very easily see this being integrated into other social networks as well as Line to drum up more communication. Not communication. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it, man. So I should mention, though, um, I I think this is a great idea. I think that this is a wonderful idea to put Dr. Mario on mobile. It's one of the games that I think fits perfectly for mobile out of the games that Nintendo has in their IP. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For me, I am absolute straight hot garbage at Dr. Mario and Tetris and Puyo Puyo (laughs) and all of those games because they give me so much anxiety while I'm playing that I, I try to figure it out. And then I'm like, no, I made a mistake. No, not there oh, I should have done this. And then I just become completely dissatisfied with my performance. Well, now you can take that anxiety on the go with you like you always wanted. Believe me, my anxiety (laughs) always on the go with me. All right. That's a true statement. (laughs) But I think that this is great because it captures that market, not only because it's perfect for mobile, but it captures that market of people who don't play games anymore, but they're nostalgic for this game from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Those people are having kids, so this could lead to them buying Nintendo products for their family. Yeah. This really kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of the publicity that we've been seeing from the higher ups in Nintendo. Um, Just the comments about wanting to double down and strengthen the growth in the mobile platform. So don't get ahead of yourself on this. We're going to go right into that in just a minute, Galen. (laughs) Before we jump into that, as I said, there was a delay for Mario Kart Tour on mobile. Mm-hmm. This is going to be coming in summer of 2019, which is kind of weird because they said Dr. Mario World is going to be early summer. And I mean, these are two Mario properties, even though they're different types of games. Like still, you want to space those out, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's kind of weird. We don't know like anything about this game. And all we know is now that it's delayed till summer. So for me, I don't care, whatever. What do you think? <laughs> we we do know that you ha- you should be playing it only on the most elitist of phones and <laughs> Oh, I have a really I have an old phone. I just refuse to spend so much money on a phone. Like it's so hard, man. Then you should just throw throw your phone and yourself into a river and just let it float away. <laughs> I don't know. Listen. I bet... <laughs> uh I think this joke got a little dark even for me. So <laughs> I'm fine with the delay. I mean, it's it's kind of like hearing the delay of Metroid Prime 4. Like, I'm disappointed that we're not going to be getting it a little bit sooner, but since we knew so very little about it to begin with, it's not really a whole lot of loss. It's more of, I never had a release date to begin with, so what did I actually lose in this process? So I get that comparison, but I am still making scrunched up what face at you right now. (laughs) It's, how are you comparing this to Metroid Prime? Like, I'm (sighs) saying with the, with the gravity of having a known title be pushed back. Like, yeah, I mean, sure. But I mean, like, this is Mario Kart Mobile. It's not like a game like Metroid Prime 4 in a series that we were not sure if it was truly dead or not kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't know. It just, it's beyond comparison for me. <laughs> I, I'm trying to stay objective. I'm trying to step away from the hype and look at what we know versus what we were expecting. And right now, what we know, nothing's really changed. Like, 
That's because we don't know anything. I, I don't think that there's hype for this game other than like just the, the mere fact of, oh yeah, Mario There Kart's is no hype for this game whatsoever because nobody knows anything about it. At least with yeah, I think that Prime, there's... you knew something. But it's... So for Mario Kart, it's not that there's like, I mean, there is no hype, but it's not like negative hype, right? Like for example, mm -hmm. um, that PS4 game that's coming out, Anthem, there's like no hype for that game. Not because we don't know anything about it, but because people just aren't excited about it. What are you talking about? There's tons of hype for that game. I'm hyped for that game. <laughs> for Anthem? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i sure you are. This is definitely your al your up your alley, but I'm talking about general reactions across the internet. That game's not getting the best of, of hype press. It's I heard that it's looking fine, it's playing fine, but just people in general are not excited about it. It's sort of like putting in, I mean, this is a, a strong comparison, but like it's sort mm. of like putting in a new Battle Royale game. Like, <laughs> things for anthem are kind of take the the share is taken up by games like warframe and destiny destiny yeah so i don't know Th that's this is off the rails everything's going wrong <laughs> everything's going bad look what you've done t t tell you what we'll we'll talk more about destiny later personally but her anthem destiny no later <laughs> uh going back to uh mortal kombat tour <laughs> i would i would do mortal kombat tour you would do Mortal Kombat on your phone? No. <laughs> mobile fighters, I've never played one mobile fighter that has been worth anything. Like, it's just a, that's a genre that doesn't work well. No, it, it, it's, it just does not work. <laughs> oh my god, we because have I, to get back on track, Galen. This is, this is bad. <laughs> Mario Kart oh, Tour, delayed, yes. summer 2019. No one yeah. cares. Stop, <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen to that game anymore. <laughs> It's just, we don't know anything, all right? We'll know something later. We, Whatever. You know what? I'm going to go a little bit on a limb here to say I would not be surprised if we saw a mobile direct in the future. Like, if we yeah, saw yeah, Nintendo direct more geared towards their mobile stuff, because more so this year than any other year, I feel like they've really been, <laughs> I wouldn't say accenting, um, accentuating. Mm, mm, mm. the importance of wanting to grow in the mobile market yeah and definitely they've really kind of put their money where their mouth was with the games that they have been releasing and mm -hmm. some of them haven't been the greatest like Mitomo series even though i thought that was a fun concept they just had nothing to support it yeah so Mitomo, you know like when it first launched i was like oh this is cool this is like a fun little thing to do and then a mm -hmm. month later i was like eh and then it got that huge, huge content update that was pretty good from what I hear, but that happened like a year later, or I don't know if it was that long ago, mm -hmm. but it was quite far into its life cycle. And I think most people had already fallen off of that. Yeah. I remember I was really into Mitomo for about a month and a half, and then yeah, I was yeah. just like, there, there's nothing more to do on this. I've, I've, I've given my piece on this one. Yeah, it was cute and fun. I feel like Nintendo is definitely learning from their past mistakes. Yeah, they've been reiterating that message, actually, so I, I mm -hmm. agree with you. Yeah. Mario Kart Tour. We know very little, but it's coming out later this year. It got caught at a stop sign. ba da ba ba da ba Honk. <laughs> sucks. This show sucks. <laughs> Boring. So let's jump into the fiscal year... 2019 quarter three financial results. So the first chunk that I want to talk about is sales. Sales forecast for the Nintendo Switch was reduced from 20 million in a year down to 17 million. Nintendo says though that growth is still continuing at a rapid pace globally. Honestly, 17 million is nothing to sneeze at. That's still amazing. No, not at all. Yeah, that's, that's still quite amazing. So we'll see mm -hmm. if they hit that mark. Furukawa mentioned like, what was it like a week or two ago? He was like, "No, we're gonna hold that that goalpost of twenty million units." And I translated mm -hmm. that. Then he comes out and he says this, and I'm like, "What the hell, man? You make me sound like a jerk." <laughs> so anyway, furthering into the facts here, North American and European software sales were beyond Nintendo's expectations. Foundation is set for further business growth. Mm -hmm. Nintendo had an incredibly, incredibly successful holiday season in hardware and software. Bar graphs on our website show all this information visually. It's much easier rather than explaining it. So just check out our website. Yeah. 
basically these bar graphs say all year over year sales in all territories were much higher than the already very successful 2017 like just looking at it it's it's huge it's like almost it's almost twice as much in certain categories it's crazy mm -hmm. including these great sales is the third party sales for the nine month period leading up into december all third party sales are up more than double year over year which is great news and also very important for nintendo to be promoting so this is this is really good news. It's a shame that they reduced their their forecast down to 17 million. I wish that they wouldn't have set it so high, but I think that that was like such a a number for them to get out as promotion. There was one Singaporean analyst that referred to them reducing their sales forecast from 20 million to 17 million as mm -hmm. a huge failure. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, just just stop. Little yeah, tiny, I... little tiny fish trying to like eat off of the the food that flies past the sharks this is a terrible analogy the, it, the whatever i'm saying <laughs> i i don't think that this is a failure at all to lower your numbers by three million because one thing that i want to point out kind of going back to the numbers that you were talking about so numbers that i was able to find and i was able to pull from this forecast so to date the switch has sold 32 million units 14 and a half million of those were sold last quarter alone. So doing the math on this, almost 45% of all of the switches that they have sold were sold in this last quarter alone. Are you that sure that's accurate? Huge. No, I'm positive. I got that directly from the translation on our site. And I 100% understand why that gave Nintendo the confidence to come out and say, hey, this is what we want our goal to be. Now, were they shooting for the stars? Yeah, of course they were. I mean, I feel like there were a lot of companies that kind of, that are a little overambitious when it comes to that type of thing. But yeah, yeah. It, it didn't affect the quality of what they were able to produce. No. Realistically adjusting those numbers around shows that they have the foresight to recognize when they might be pushing themselves a little bit too hard and correct the course to still be ambitious but still try to gain ground in a realistic sense yeah sometimes i like to see nintendo have these kinds of situations where i mean this isn't like a failure this isn't like a stumble this isn't anything like that this is just them not being no. able to meet an over ambitious goal but th sometimes i like to see nintendo have these little situations because it forces them to push themselves nintendo always uh, excels when their their ass is lit and on fire just like with the wii u and same thing mm -hmm. with like the gamecube not that the gamecube was a failure or anything but it was a slow sales thing then they were like all right reassess the market try and find out where are the opportunities and they nailed it with the wii and the ds same thing with going from the wii u to the switch they identified where the opportunities were and i think that th this is on a much lower scale of course we're just talking about the difference between three million sales mm -hmm. i think that we could see potentially from this nintendo say okay we got to push out like one or two more different titles or we got to release some of these remasters that people have been craving like super mario sunshine or just something like that to help drum more sales up so to put this in another comparison and i'm maybe kind of stepping over myself with another one of the stats that we haven't talked about yet but uh he also referred to 3ds sales and one of the big you're going way ahead I, I know i'm going way ahead but it, it it links back over to what i'm talking about here I create these outlines for a reason. Well, I ignore these outlines for a reason. <laughs> but yeah, so the the 3DS was reported to have a total units of uh, just under 75 million units that have been sold to date. That system has been on the market for eight years. The Switch hasn't even been out for two, and it's already at about 40% of that number that growth is incredible yeah we've seen all different kinds of um reports where switch is the fastest selling console in this region or in this country and none of that information is sullied by the reduction in sales forecast for the switch from 20 mm -hmm. million to 17 million in one year exactly so nintendo also mentioned at their financial results the importance of asia moving forward they said that sales are growing significantly in the Asian markets, 
and the sell-in for Switch has already reached more than twice the cumulative sell-in for the Nintendo 3DS. I think that this is great news, and um, this is kind of like, like mostly they're talking about China, just because mm -hmm. the the amount of people that live there. There's almost two billion people in in China. Well, and you've got China, you've got Korea, you've got. I'm trying to remember if there was anything else that was. India, I think, is still classified as the Asian market. That was one of the ones that was coming to mind. There's yeah. a ton of people in India. What up, our Indian fans? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and Nintendo also reaffirmed some of their best-selling Switch... Not some, but the best-selling Switch games. At number one is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with over 15 <laughs> million sales, which is just baff not baffling, but just hilarious because it's a port of a wii u game an updated <laughs> port with some more features and, and maps and stuff and it's at 15 million that's just the power of mario kart right i, I would like to also uh mention i really appreciate your acronym of mk8dx that's what it is in the notes <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> then we got mario odyssey at just under 14 million mm -hmm. at number three amazingly is smash ultimate with over 12 million and yeah that's the i mean that, that just amazing. came out that's like what five weeks old now so smash ultimate is actually the fastest selling start for any game on any nintendo home console ever that's amazing mm. that's so amazing then at number four is zelda breath of the wild at a little over 11 and a half million then mm -hmm. number five is pokemon let's go at 10 million which is really impressive because that game just came out too <laughs> and then Splatoon 2 at a little over 8 million. Yeah. And then, because I forgot, Super Mario Party at a little over 5 million. That's pretty impressive, too, because that just came out. That came out in, what, September, October? I uh, want it came, say it came out in October. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. All, all around just awesome sales and news for their software. And can I just say that sales aside, all of those games are fantastic games. Yeah, I haven't touched Pokemon Let's Go, but all the other ones, of course, I've played, and they're wonderful. Yeah, they're they're fantastic. They're, there's a reason they've been selling so well. I mean, they are able to put out such good quality in making something that's enjoyable for people. Hmm. So then moving on to the other big, big news in the financial results, is Nintendo talking heavily about expanding their IP. Nintendo says that they want to continue expanding customers' contact with their IP. They said, quote, to broaden genre and scale of Nintendo's involvement in entertainment through the use of smart devices and other kinds of entertainment besides games, end quote. They also said to expand, quote, through partnerships with other companies, end quote. And also in big, bold red font on one of their infographics, they have, quote, encourage the great number of consumers worldwide to love Nintendo and continue loving it, end quote. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. I like that. So when they're talking about entertainment besides games, they're talking about how Super Nintendo World at Universal Park Japan will be ready in 2020 for the Olympics. I want to go. <laughs> I want to go to an actual Nintendo land. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then there are also plans for expansions in the US, London, and Hollywood at a later date. And for the animated Super Mario movie, they are aiming for a 2022 release. So that's that's gotten some time in the oven to cook, you know? Uh, yeah. So I, well, if, it's, if it's anything like the last Super Mario movie, they uh, they should definitely take their time cooking this one. <laughs> yeah, I I love how weird that original mario movie is i i loved watching it all the time when i was younger it, it just was weird it was not mm. mario it was weird and it was like blade runnery and i don't know I, it was fine everybody do the dinosaur they made yoshi into a raptor i'm sorry can we talk about That's how fine. ridiculous that was ignore it ignore it <laughs> in addition to that they are opening up a new nintendo store in tokyo in shibuya to be specific Hmm. And then Nintendo also says that they want to keep their IP and ideas unique, and the goal is to be overwhelmingly fun and for the appeal to be easily understood at a glance. Mm -hmm. I think this is all great news. This is yeah. exactly what Nintendo needs to be doing. They have these amazing, strong, recognizable IP that they're sitting on, kind of like Disney people, mm -hmm. 
and just put them in all these different avenues and draw them into video games. That's how things work now. Marketing is done by people on social media by basically free marketing, you know? And yeah. this this is one of the avenues Nintendo needs to pursue. I think it's great. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, if this is the direction that I feel Nintendo has been needing to go for quite some time. Because yes. we've been seeing it in their in their consoles that they've been coming out with ever since the Wii that they have not necessarily been trying to keep up with the latest specs but what they really have been focusing on is that innovation and ways to change the market to best suit not necessarily their needs but also the needs of innovation itself taking all of these ips broadcasting them out spreading the word of this is how nintendo is really going to stay competitive I mean, they're, they're, they're changing the way they are doing battle, in a sense. They're not coming at this from a standpoint of, hey, look at my game. Look at how many zombies I can get onto the screen. Look at how fast and 60 frames per second, 4K, blah, 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 blah. They're like, hey, remember that it's games are supposed to be fun. And I feel like being as recognizable as they are, I think they should be doubling down on making themselves even more recognizable and reminding more people that there's a reason that these games are so fun and that everybody knows them as well as they do. Mm -hmm. So Nintendo also talks about their future plans, of course. They said that they have future titles yet unannounced. A uh, big duh right there. <laughs> <laughs> and they tease something that fans would be delighted to know. Yeah, that was a quote. Delighted to know. So it's probably something in an established series, and do you have any guesses on that, Galen? Miss Gold Ninja Goemon. But that's owned by Konami, and yes, I want that to be the case. Don't care. That's what I want. Make I want it happen, it so Nintendo. Bad. Oh my god, I love <laughs> Mystical Ninja so much. <laughs> they also talked about not having delays in titles that the market is concerned about. I'm thinking that they're probably talking about Pokemon with that or something. Yeah. Some of these statements are vague. <laughs> they also said how the Nintendo 3DS market is shrinking faster than they expected, which, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I don't think that that's Nintendo saying that to themselves. I think that that's Nintendo saying that to their investors and their financial, yeah. whatever these people are, right? Mm -hmm. They're proving to them that, hey, 3DS is kind of, you know. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, 3DS sold, I think it was like 2.3 million units last year. And compared to how many they've been selling the previous years that's like a 60 percent decrease oh, or wow. just a little bit more than that so yeah when it was when the switch first launched this 3ds mm -hmm. was still selling well alongside it and that made sense for them to keep developing games but now it's kind of looking like mm, i don't think people want to carry around two pieces of hardware with them i know that's mm -hmm. that's what i said personally but <laughs> you know I know that I definitely have been selecting either my Switch or my 3DS to carry around with me when I go places. And yeah, yeah. more often than not, I've been leaning more on taking the Switch with me. Yeah, big surprise, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Nintendo also says that they have a lot of ideas, and it's important that contents are unique to Nintendo, and that mm -hmm. they are not denying approval for internal development ideas. That, to me, sounds like they're encouraging ideas and creativity within the company's development teams. And I like it. I like to hear something like that. 100%, yeah. And as recognizable as Nintendo is for the franchises that they have established, they have never been known to shy away from taking risks on games that could potentially lead to new IPs. Uh, I think I mentioned it on a previous podcast. Um... Big Hero 6, or not Big Hero 6, oh god. Uh, Wonderful 101. <laughs> Turned out to be a fantastic game, and they that was definitely a game that they took a risk on. I'm really hoping we see more innovative titles like that. Mm. And Nintendo, of course, reiterated that dedicated hardware slash software game platforms will still be its core business. They said, quote, constantly create fresh surprises never forgetting the spirit of originality based on the belief that value of entertainment lies in its uniqueness. And I think that that's a big portion of Nintendo fans 
why they flocked to Nintendo consoles is because of the originality and the uniqueness that Nintendo fosters. Mm -hmm. Furukawa also reflected on business in the early 2000s up till today to explain how Nintendo is as a business. Like, the gist of it is that they observed market trends and identified an untapped market, kind of like I said earlier. And that's what led to the Wii and the DS. And then after this was the rise of mobile gaming, which changed the whole game up. And then this is why Nintendo is redefining some of their strengths and establishing their business, especially with exploring avenues with their IP. And then something interesting that they talked about in the financial results is how often they mentioned their Nintendo account. They mentioned it like mm -hmm. quite a lot, which makes me think, is something up their sleeve? Is there something new that they're going to be announcing or something? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> they said that the Nintendo Switch Online retention is critical and that they will be enhancing the service throughout the year, which, you know, duh. Like you can say like you're going to keep releasing NES games on it and that's enhancing the service. So I don't think they I'd better be... keep enhancing the service. If they don't enhance the service, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> Boy, what a, what a 180 you took on that since like episode what was it, seven or something like I'm happy. <laughs> but yes, I agree. And they said, quote, they aim to create long term relationships with customers through initiatives to promote the business based on the use of Nintendo account. They also said, quote, to leverage Nintendo account. So this is weird that they're just suddenly talking about this uh, as if it's like some sort of like, I don't know, platform to engage with consumers. Because mm -hmm. so far we haven't really seen that, have we? Like we've seen my Nintendo and things like that. But that's uh, I mean, that's small, small potatoes compared to anything else. So I think something's something's coming. I just missed the Nintendo Rewards program that you actually got. Uh, Nintendo, oh god, what's the word? Paraphernalia? Rewards? <laughs> like, physical rewards? Well, yeah, just the physical rewards, so yeah. Like, I, I still have my uh, canvas Pikmin tote bag that I carry my luncheon sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I also have the canvas Pikmin tote bag. Yeah, and I know that they're doing a lot of more realistic rewards such as hey here's a discount on your next game which is fine but it takes a little bit of the personality out of it i would be more inclined to register and buy more nintendo games if i got those physical rewards still on there versus hey i'll buy a game for nintendo but maybe i won't register because i mean who cares about a five cent discount later down the road but you don't have to register games anymore you do if you have to buy the cartridge versions. No, they stopped that years ago. What? So clearly you haven't been using the service. <laughs> 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 they stopped that years ago. They stopped that with, uh, what was it called? The Nintendo, oh my god, what's it called? The old thing. The thing with the, the physical rewards. The, yeah, the Nintendo rewards. What was that thing called? I thought it was just called, <laughs> I just thought it was called Nintendo rewards. No! What the f*** is that called? <laughs> what the f*** was it called? I'm losing my mind! Nintendo... I'm looking this up right now. Google Foo. Nintendo old reward system. What was it called? Not my Nintendo. Club Nintendo. That's what it's called. Oh, yeah. that's it. They did away with that with Club <laughs> Nintendo. The, the physical thing. Like... Yeah. Like, now you don't register anything. <laughs> I thought that for the Nintendo reward program that they have now, every time you bought a game on the eShop, you got coins, either silver coins or gold coins, that you can redeem for, like, digital wallpapers or things like that. And then the other no, type of no, currency no. you can use on something else. No. So you get gold coins right back, which basically is just like a 5% discount on a future game. Not a 5%, mm -hmm. hold on, sorry. You get 5% digital cash back on a future purchase. That's what gold coins are for the gotcha. Switch and the 3DS and the Wii U if you're still buying stuff on that and like a crazy person. <laughs> so honestly, that aspect of my Nintendo, totally fine with me. Getting 5% back is great. I, of course, love the digital deluxe promotion that they used with the Wii U where you got 10% back. Like, that's awesome. But that was like, honestly, too generous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So 5% back, I'm totally cool with that. 
And then the silver coins, I don't even bother with them because, yeah, it's like discounts on old games and uh, it's it, it sucks. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like, I, I get that, like, it's a free currency. Like, you don't have to spend anything to get silver coins or anything like that. But, mm. I mean, if it's a discount on an old game and it's only like 20% off or 30% off or something, like, what do I care? What do I care? Yeah. Like, for example, I just got my email in my email because my birthday is coming this month um nintendo sent me discounts uh, like a 30 percent discount on my game of choice kind of thing and they're all quality games but they're all quality games that came out like five or six years ago yeah and lots of them i own digitally so it's like you already know i know you know nintendo that i own this friggin game so R regardless a tune-up of this system is desperately needed yeah, what were we talking about? <laughs> anyway, all this is very peculiar. It's all peculiar. Can I be the title weird that of they're this talking podcast? <laughs> That's very peculiar. <laughs> um, no, we're calling it Nintendo Domination. That's what I'm going to call it, yeah. <laughs> but folks at home I probably already knew that because, uh, yeah. So anyway, they're talking about Nintendo account, which encompasses a bunch of little things like my Nintendo. So we're not just talking my Nintendo here. They're talking about Nintendo account. Let's see what goes on in the future. I bet Nintendo's got something up their sleeve. Absolutely. And then finally, in the financial results, they talked about their mobile efforts. And there's this one kind of long quote, but it's really interesting. Is it? Let me see. I'll cut this out if it sucks. Quote, the current market environment for smart device applications is showing signs of maturity and the competition is becoming even fiercer. Also, it's becoming difficult to create different game experiences on different levels. And with the pervasiveness of smart devices, the gaming population has expanded rapidly beyond the reach of Nintendo's dedicated video game products. We will continue to propose products that are not limited by the definition of game and that bring entertainment to various consumers regardless of region, gender, or age. However, the term of gaming population expansion itself does not fit in the current situation." End quote. Now, when I read this, I'm thinking, what the hell does this mean? You got any ideas, Galen? So, God, I'm going to have to read this like two or three more times. <laughs> it's, it's a promotion jargon, you know? Yeah, what I'm thinking this, this means isn't necessarily growth for the sake of numbers sake. Saying, hey, we had, you know, 3.7 million more gamers this year and we can tell because they've been all playing games. I mean, it's, I think that's what he's talking about where the term of gaming population expansion itself does not fit this current situation. I think what he's trying to refer to is gaming retention more than gaming population. Like, get people to play games and get them to play them for longer, more consistently. Yeah, I'm sort of with you on that thought process. What I'm more so thinking about it as is their mobile efforts are a totally different strategy than mm. their dedicated gaming hardware. Yeah. And they're acknowledging the difficulties and the sort of the unknowns for lack of better term of mobile and they're trying to appro approach that in a different way and they're just letting their investors know mm -hmm. if that's the case that's good that's a good little thing to say yeah it, it lets people know you're aware and you're not just like well, let's put out games you just put games on the thing and that's it and it sells and it makes money and it prints money <laughs> none, none of this sounds prints like money <laughs> none of this sounds like you know they're way up their butt like sony can often sound like and i love sony i'm not trying to like not trying to shit on sony right now i really do love sony but especially when the ps3 first came out they sounded like oh everyone's gonna buy it because it's a playstation playstation 1 and playstation yeah. 2 were so immensely successful let's just give a, a 900 hundred dollar console it wasn't 900 dollars, but it was crazy ps3 and it was <laughs> difficult to develop for and then you know the the, not failures, but the sloping, the decline and the raise then of the PS3 versus the Xbox 360 is what made Nintendo is what made Sony be like, oh, hey, here's a PS4 and it's not super crazy expensive and it's great. And then now they're kind of getting a little bit uppity again. You know, Sony is. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, uh, Sony, can you dial it back a sec? <laughs> so anyway, my point is that this, none of this sounds like that. 
for Nintendo. It sounds like they're being very aware, very cautious, and very proactive, which is cool because Nintendo's typically pretty conservative with their business practices, and mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah. Like, looking at this overall presentation and the statements that they're focusing on, the statements that they are trying to make, I feel very much that what they are trying to double down on is making a statement of we are Nintendo, we are unique, and this is the reason why. Yeah, and they're they're talking about their uniqueness and diversifying their interests. And I think that mm-hmm. that's great. That's what investors like to hear as well. Yeah. Nintendo also says that they're going to be proactively driving partnerships with other companies, clearly as we're seeing with Line and who did Psy Games. They did Dragalia Lost with Psy Games. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also said that they are, quote, creating points of contact with Nintendo all over the world, finding the right playstyle for smart devices, end quote. So that makes sense Mm -hmm. to me. That's like, you know, kids and their phones. Like I always say, I see little kids holding their parents' phone while their parent is like constantly trying to do something as simple as like grocery shopping. And they're like, oh my God, this child is driving me nuts here. Just take my phone. Just take my phone and leave me alone. (laughs) It happens. Totally happens. Kids know how Mm -hmm. to... Uh, navigate a phone or a touch device without being able to read. Yeah. This kind of thing makes sense. It's a potential to grow these people as fans, whether it's the parents, whether it's the kids, whether it's tech savvy um, losers like us. (laughs) (laughs) So that does it for the gist of the financial results. Lots of things to chew on right there. That was a lot of info to digest. And there was so much more. <laughs> there was so much more that I couldn't even fit into it. It's on our website. Check out our website. We've been churning out those 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 friggin' articles left and right lately. Yeah. In addition to all this, we got a little bit of news that Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth for the Nintendo 3DS is officially coming west in June. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba. Yeah. So this is a 3DS game, which I think is kind of funny that we have to point that out, right? It is, of course, a $40 game. There's also mm-hmm. a collector's edition called the Showtime Premium Edition for $70. Mm-hmm. US dollars. In that collector's edition, you get the game, of course, a plush, mm-hmm. an art book, four buttons, and a deck of playing cards. So this is fantastic yeah. news for people who have been just dying for this game, just waiting for it. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that $30 over the base game is a little much for what you're getting? Mm, I don't know. That, that was a, a oddly musical hum. <laughs> Wasn't it? It's weird. It, it was it was very on tune. <laughs> yeah. Duh, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the size of the art book is. If the art yeah. book is like a pamphlet, yeah. But if it's a little bit bigger, no. You imagine that it can't be that big because it has to come packaged in something that would also be able to contain the game case of a 3DS game. Like, I don't imagine this art book being any bigger than maybe a DVD case or so. Well, what do you mean, though? Like, the everything's going to be bigger than the 3DS case. I mean, there's a plush that comes in it, so it's probably all going to come in a box. Yeah. So I don't think that size is a factor in that. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's hard to say because I've I've seen the pictures of the collector's edition and everything. I want to say that the art book looked to be about the same size as the plush, but then again, they Photoshop is a thing and they enhance certain uh, aspects of it over others. So Listen, it's your hard. tinfoil hat is on too tight. <laughs> when I was looking over this, though, it got me to thinking... Was there a collector's edition that came out when this game launched in Japan? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Probably. So I, I did a little bit of research into it, and on the site, they, on the actual Persona Japanese website, they have a bunch of different versions, I want to call it. I, I do not read Japanese with the literacy that you do, so I wasn't 100% sure, but... I couldn't tell if it was you got the game and these are the other packages that you got along with it, or these were just additional things that you could get with the game. But one of the ones that I found on there was called like the uh, Famitsu DX pack, which sold for 11,990 yen, and it comes yeah, with a yeah, it comes with a 300-piece jigsaw puzzle, um, four special 
they call them rock glass cups, or they were just like whiskey cups that you would get. Yeah, um, it's called a rock glass. You're not much of a drinker. I am not much of a drinker. <laughs> you should be able to tell that. <laughs> it's it's what you get when you say, can I get whiskey on the rocks? Is that where that comes from? <laughs> well, rock, rock means the ice, the, the large ice cubes, right? So this rock glass is what they use when you say, give me I, a whatever on the rocks. Yeah, I, I thought that was just like a uh, whatever with ice. I, I didn't know it was referring to the actual glass type. Well, the glass type is what came about from the term. That makes sense. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Uh, and it, Well, going back to this, it also comes with some, like, some badges and then a pouch to carry everything and, like, DLC for the game. And I would kind of like this collector's pack more than the other collector's pack that we're getting here. Yeah, but sense. are you going to be paying, like, $100, $110 for that? Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I know Probably. you won't. <laughs> so I think that a $70 collector's edition is fine. Yeah. Atlas is usually pretty good with their collector's editions in that they don't like super overproduce them and they don't say, oh, it's a collector's edition, but it's like going to be on clearance. Yeah. Three months, three or four months from now, you're going to find it half off in the collect in the discount bin. Yeah. I, I see that kind of stuff all the time with uh, Sony games in particular. I don't know why. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's funny that you say that. Uh, I went to Best Buy not too long ago, and there is a collector's edition of, it was like one, I think it was the fourth Uncharted game that has been there for over a year and a half. Like that mm -hmm. particular box. I see it every time I actually go in. <laughs> and it's always a reminder of me every time they come out with these collector's games. It's like, is this something that is worth presenting as a collection item or is this something that nobody wants they just are making themselves feel important by saying hey we have a collector's game so i'm, I'm trying to be critical of it if this were a playstation podcast we would have lots to say about that because they've been releasing some ridiculous things like the devil may cry uh collector's edition that comes with the coat and it's bajillions of dollars like yeah. <laughs> anyway or the resident evil one that comes with an actual typewriter <laughs> The, 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 that is all hilarious and for a separate timeline that we are living it's a parallel world <laughs> where you and i are doing a sony podcast instead so that does it for the majority of news we're gonna have so much more news next week to talk about as well because we just couldn't fit it into this podcast this podcast is so jam-packed there was a lot that we wanted to talk about I'm, I'm i'm a little sad we didn't get to everything we were originally going to talk about me too <laughs> Not even Kirby. If this podcast were in physical form, not even Kirby could fit everything in his mouth. That That's a pretty big claim. Hi! So this week for additional DLC, I have a video on YouTube. The video is called Take a Brain Dump, and it's by Satchel Drakes. Satch is a fantastic, fantastic content creator on YouTube. He doesn't upload all that often, but every single time he does, it is an extremely concise and quality video in terms of editing, cinematography, and audio design as well. Now this video, Take a Brain Dump, is episode two in an ongoing series focusing on productivity. That series is called Damn Good Habits. The video is very short, I think around eight minutes or something, and it encourages good planning habits through something he calls DSLR. Dump, sort, label, rank. It's really helped me with being productive, really helped me not forgetting things, and really helping me to stay committed to short-term goals. And I highly recommend it to pretty much anybody, because I think anybody can benefit from being a little bit introspective on their planning habits. So check out links in the description for that. Galen, what you got? So this week, I'm actually going to tell you about something that has been stuck in my head for the past couple of weeks, and that is mm. the songs from DA Games. They're a YouTube channel, and he splits up his content as a Let's Player and as a music creator. Him in his actual Let's Plays, I have to be honest, I'm like, I feel mediocre about However, the songs that he's making are all based on the games that he's playing. 
So mm. uh, he went through a phase where he did a lot of the Let's Play staples like Cuphead and Hello Neighbor and Five Nights and Freddy's and Inky and the... Oh, these are all games I don't want to play. <laughs> but he takes the music and he has a very like swing pop esque feel to his music. Like mm -hmm. it was very reminiscent of Caravan Palace and uh, Panic at the Disco and Tape Five, and it, it was just very catchy. And it took me off guard the first couple of times I heard it because I found myself humming it in the car the, later that day. And I was just like, oh, hang on. I want to listen to that again. So who is that again? Uh, it's DA Games. Hmm. Highly recommend. Just give a couple of his uh, songs to listen to. They're pretty fun. Cool. So that does it for additional DLC. Let's talk about Listener Mail. Listener Mail. I'm going to come up I'm with dabbing, a jingle for that. dabbing right now. Every single time I say listener mail, I dab. <laughs> Ricky, protect future of sidekicks. If you've got an email that you want to send us, you can send it to us at nintendoeverythingpod at gmail.com. Back me up, Galen. nintendoeverythingpod at gmail.com. And if you wrote us an email, it might sound a little something like this. <laughs> this week... Lauren writes, Hey guys, just started listening. Found you guys on Reddit as a recommended podcast. Ooh, thank you. Nice, thanks. If you could give a three-sentence pitch to make any game you wanted, what would it be? Thank you, Lauren. Hmm, thanks, Lauren. Yeah. So I am going to leave this one to you, Galen. <laughs> so I was talking about this a little bit beforehand, but I would love to make a... 2.5D side-scrolling platformer where you can generate your own superhero. So you'd be able to customize your outfit, your powers, your fighting style. Are you limiting your sentences here? I'm going for three sentences. This is my second sentence. So you would be able to customize your powers, outfit, fighting style with randomly generated citizen system that changed your sidekicks and your villains for a unique playthrough experience. And then for my third sentence, the world would remember your actions and choices, and to make things more interesting, it would have a parallel world online mode where you can join another hero's world to form your own superhero teams. Hmm. That sounds <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Truth be told, I have actually had this idea, and I've been mulling it around for a couple of years back when I was uh, in the, in considering it another past life to be a game developer. <laughs> so, And now but you put I that just, internet idea out onto the internet, and now it's somebody else can make it. <laughs> you know what? I anybody who wants to pick it up, get in contact with me. I would love to share you some of the ideas. I've been thinking about this for a long time. But no, I just, I would love that kind of a game. Just a mm. game where you could make your own hero. Every time you played with that hero, the choices that you made in it dynamically changed the city that you were in. And Sounds like a nightmare of code. Not too much, actually. I feel like the parallel world trope is so prevalent in superhero modes. I'm surprised we haven't seen that sooner <laughs> in a video game. <laughs> Like, I would love to be able to see, hey, you are in Edge City. Now come over to Scenic City and find out what we're all about. And the two cities are completely different. You can see buildings that have been destroyed in other, in other battles that your character has been having. I want to know who the Lord of Edge City is. <laughs> well, that's for the player to find out. Maybe you are the Lord of Edge. So coming up on our website, nintendoeverything.com, we have a new article on Smash and the main theme song and the singer behind it. The singer behind it's only 18 years old. I didn't know that. I thought she was an older lady. Hmm. Should be coming out pretty soon if it's not out already. So check that out. We got a couple more translations that we put out throughout the week for Sakurai talking Smash Online. And we've got a whole bunch more that we're all working on and we're all cooking up right now. So keep an eye out for what's coming up on NintendoEverything.com. 
Nice. We also have the Twitter. That's at Nin Everything. And then also our YouTube, youtube.com slash Nin Everything. And then if you want to tweet at me, tell me how mean I am to Galen, because I am. Actually, I'm not saying that. That's, that's <laughs> overplayed now. That's way too much. You, you, you've, been, you've been pretty good this episode. Thank you. <laughs> I had, like... I, there was like zombies crawling a fence and I was knocking them all off and except they weren't zombies they were all insults about Galen and then like I knocked him <laughs> off the fence <laughs> thank you you can tweet me at Oni underscore Dino and Galen how about you what you got cooking you can definitely find me at Mobius 87 um not much I can report right now. I'm still working away on that uh, secret project I was talking about last week. So Top secret. Top secret. Like, top shelf top secret. Mm. Yeah. I'm, You're going to need a really... rock glass to drink all that secret. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, only the finest, the chilled rock glass with one of those, like, secret stones that you kind of put in. So it doesn't get watered down, you know. With a, a side of Bowsett. <laughs> So if you're a new listener, please give us a rating on iTunes. The five-star rating helps us get found. And leave us comments. Share this with anybody you think might like it. Whoever shared us on Reddit, super love that person. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Love you, guys! And stay tuned for us next week on Sunday for everything Nintendo. Stay tuned to Nintendo Everything. Bye-bye. Later, everyone. <laughs>